Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. Here I have all three versions of the Apple A15 chip. The most powerful one being the one in the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which has five core GPU and the highest frequency of CPU. And then the one in the iPad mini 6 has a slightly underclocked CPU, while the one on the iPhone 13 has only four cores for GPU. So today we are going to benchmark all these three versions of A15, and this will be an interesting comparison. As you can see, before every test, I'll do a temperature test to make sure every device is cool. And the very first benchmark we are going to do is Geekbench, which is a pure CPU benchmark. Okay, so we can see that the iPhone 13 Pro Max scored the highest for both single core and multi core. iPad mini has a slightly underclocked CPU, so for both single core and multi core, it scores a little bit lower. I think the A15 in the Apple 13 has the same CPU frequency as the A15 in the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so you can see the single core score is almost the same, but the multi core score is a little bit lower. And this, I believe, is because of the smaller body and the worse heat dissipation. So I guess the one in the iPhone 13 probably throttled a little bit. Okay, so the next test we are going to do is a little bit more interesting. I'll actually set Geekbench 5 to run 10 times consecutively. I'll also set the interval to 0, that means no rest time between each run. So this will show us how good the sustained performance are for each of these devices or CPUs. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we see some very good results here. After even 10 consecutive runs, the Apple A15 can still maintain a very good performance. And here we still see that the iPhone 13 Pro Max seems to be the best performer here. But I think the iPad mini 6 has the lowest temperature that should be due to its larger body to dissipate the heat better. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we see a temperature of 37 to 38 degrees, while on the iPad mini 6, the highest I can see is only 34 degrees. Okay, next one we'll do N22 benchmark. So this is a comprehensive benchmark that covers CPU, GPU, storage, and uh, RAM. All right, just do a quick check to make sure the devices are all cool and let's go straight into the test. Okay, so the test is almost finished. Let's measure the temperature first. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we see a highest temperature of 38. While on the 13, we can only find 36. So the iPhone 13 is actually a little bit cooler than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is interesting. But then of course, not surprisingly, the iPad mini 6 is the coolest of the three. Uh, the highest temperature point is only 34 degrees. So it seems that this benchmark is not really that high load for these devices. Okay, so in the n test, Surprisingly, the iPhone 13 does not score any lower than iPhone 13 Pro Max. In fact, it scored a little bit higher. So it seems the missing GPU core doesn't really affect that much in this kind of uh, comprehensive test. Um, we see that the iPad mini 6 scored a little bit lower, but it's mainly because of the storage. Because mine is a 64 gigabytes, so the storage is small and it will be slower. Next, we'll try the 3D Mark stress test. And before we start, we'll just check that all the devices are cooled down to proper room temperature. And this test will actually stress out the GPU for a whole 20 minutes. So it's a very good indication of which device will be better at sustained gaming sessions. So I think this is a pretty helpful test, and let's go. Okay, so first we test the temperature. We got 37 on the iPad mini 6 and around 41 to 42 on both of the iPhones. Yep, so as we expected, the larger metal body of the iPad mini 6 
helps it to dissipate the heat much much better than the two iPhones. And then for performance, we see that for peak performance, the iPhone 13 Pro Max definitely wins. It has the highest of these three devices. However, for sustained performance, the iPad Mini 6 wins. The iPad Mini 6 has a stability of 76, while both of the iPhones have a stability of 62 to 65. But still, the iPhone 13 Pro Max performs better than the iPhone 13 even after throttling. So I guess more GPU cores will be more efficient. But what is not nice is that it seems the iPhone 13 Pro Max has too high of a power consumption. During this whole test, the iPad mini 6 used 10% of battery, the iPhone 13 used only 7%, which is amazing, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max used a whopping 22%. I'm not really sure what's happening here. Maybe the peak performance is just way too high and it's just not as efficient at all. And lastly, we'll run a GFX bench test to find out the peak GPU performance of these different A15 variants. Of course, I make sure the devices are cool and I only run the test once and take that score so that we can see what is the actual peak performance. So it's not throttled performance, it's not uh, anything else, it's just uh, peak performance, okay? Okay, so we see that the iPhone 13 Pro Max has the highest performance of 52 FPS, followed by the iPad Mini 6, which is around 46 FPS. And then lastly, the iPhone 13, because it has one less GPU core, so it's slower at 42 FPS. So it seems that the performance gap between each of these variants is around 10%. All right, guys, that's all for today's test. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.